I'm Jeffrey Ernstoff, Creative Director of the World Innovation Network. Let's start with a few smidgens of improvised music in some different styles. <laughs> Now, some of what you just heard was completely improvised, some of it was improvised based on an existing theme, and some of it was improvised upon just some of the unusual colors developed for the flute in the 20th and 21st century. But all of that was improvised by one person. And given the fact that we're all quarantined these days, I've been thinking about, and missing, group improvisation in music. Why? Not only because it's fun and challenging, but also because it calls upon abilities and passions that vividly set us apart from all other species that make us human. Whether it's conventional jazz, bluegrass, rock, Indian ragas, fusion, or anything else, good improvised music is a powerful form and form of the kind of social interaction we all love. Now at this point, you may be asking yourself, if this is going to be about group improvisation, how is anyone going to pull that off when he or she is in lockdown at home with no other musicians around? Well, for the future, that is the question. How in the future is technology going to make it possible for several musicians, each in their own rooms, to do what they do when they're on stage together, live? How will we make it possible for me to close my eyes, open my ears, and feel as though the other players are right here in the room with me? And why is that important? I said that group improvisation helps us revel in what separates us from other species. Well, first of all, it calls for empathy and the ability to understand and share metaphors through music that is metaphorically sad, happy, tense, dreamy, and so on. We revel in our ability to do that and knowing that what we're expressing can be shared and felt and subjectively returned with sympathetic vibrations from others. It's like you're part of a family and it calls for committing to a common purpose in exploring our social capacities to share in the joys of imitation, spontaneity, silliness, profundity, elation, angst, deep purpose, and just screwing around. Everyone agrees that when all the players are on the same wavelength, it's really something to behold, something that shows us who we are in relation to one another, and what it can mean to explore our individual subjectivity together, on the spot, with no delay, and with all the nuance that our virtuosity enables. And it reminds us that to be a good group improviser, or a good group anything, really, you have to be an even better listener. Listening is what enables give and take, prodding, going off on tangents, or saying from player to player, hey, I see where you're going with that, and I'll follow you, I'll let you lead, for a while until someone else butts in with an interjection that moves the whole conversation in another direction. If you think that technology is already here with available software, please think again. It's not. But if good improvisers have anything to say about it, it will be. These days we're all stuck at home. Look at all the postings on YouTube. Look at all the musicians and artists who can record something at home and send it off to several others to add parts or tracks or to engineers who can edit it and so on. You know, that's all great. But it's not like making music up on the spot, together, in one place, live, discovering who we are and just how fertile our collective imaginations, inspirations, and communications, in short, our common humanity, can be. We can make the technology to do that if we just lead with our human hearts.